Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In my last video, I showed you how to use a single headshot to create unlimited portraits. We managed to keep the face completely consistent while generating different bodies and backgrounds based on your prompts. Today, I want to show you something a little different. I will show you how to swap a face or even an entire head from a headshot onto an existing portrait. Let's jump into Confluor and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Here is our input portrait image. We want to swap the head of the woman from this headshot onto this portrait. Let's look at the final result. The image size is a large 3801 by 3801 pixels. This is the exact same size as the original portrait. The amazing thing about this workflow is that the image quality does not drop at all during the swapping process. Let me drag the original headshot next to the final portrait for a side-by-side -side comparison. The consistency is really high, right? It works well even though they are facing in different directions. You can also use this workflow just for face swapping. All you need to do is upload a cropped face image like this one. Then you just need to mask the face area. Let's look at the final output. It still looks perfect. Alright, let me explain how this workflow actually works. By the way, I did not download any models while building this workflow. I'm using a cloud platform called Running Hub that has all the models and nodes pre-installed. If you want to try this platform for free, please check the link in the video description below. You might be wondering how we can get such a large output image using a Queen Edit model. The secret is this image crop by mask and resize node. It crops only the head area we want to edit. I set these three parameters to 1024. This ensures the cropped image size is 1024 by 1024 pixels, which you can preview right here on the node. We know that one downside of the Queen Edit model is that the output image can sometimes shift position compared to the original. However, if the input image size is exactly 1024 by 1024, that shifting does not happen. In this node, the only parameter you really need to adjust is the padding. This decides how much space is around the head in the frame. I set a relatively large number here so the head only takes up a small area. If the head takes up too much of the frame, the proportions between the head and the body might look unnatural. It could also cause inconsistent lighting between the face and the background. This cropped image is what gets inpainted by the Queen Edit model. To guide the model precisely, we need to give it more information. First, we need to tell the model exactly where to inpaint. That is why I covered her head with a gray patch. You'll probably notice the jacket edges around this gray area. That is because I used the Blockify Mask node to change the shape of the original mask. If I had not modified it, the model might have mistaken the smooth mask shape for the actual hair shape. Then it would have ignored the hairstyle from our reference headshot. I also use this node to remove the background from the headshot. This helps the model focus entirely on her head rather than the background. If we give these two images as a reference to the Queen Edit model, it knows to fill the gray area with the head. To help the model understand the proportions between the head and the body, I also use the DW Pose Estimator. This generates a pose skeleton image. I disable the Detect Face option here. If I enabled it, the pose skeleton would show the shape of her face. You would also see an open mouth because the woman in the original image is smiling. If I feed the skeleton image with an open mouth, the model will also generate a smiling face. However, if the face in your portrait is not smiling, you can enable the detect face option. This helps the model understand the face angle and the head position better. Oh, I forgot to mention something. If the brightness of the face in the headshot is very different from the face in the portrait, you can use this node to adjust the brightness. Now we have prepared three images for the Queen Edit model. We have the image with the gray patch, the post skeleton image, and the headshot. In the next group of nodes, I ask the model to fill the gray area in image 1 with the woman from image 2 while referring to the pose in image 3. 
I also use the in-paint model conditioning node. This ensures the model only edits the head area. We do not want to change the other areas because this image will be pasted back onto the original portrait later. The next group performs a high-risk fix for this image. You can see that the output size of this case sampler is 2048 by 2048. During this process, the face becomes more detailed. The face consistency is also improved because I use a specific face consistency LoRa, which I introduced in my previous video. To keep the structure of the image unchanged from the last step, I chose the KL Optimal Scheduler. You can also tweak the denoising strength to decide how much you want to change the image. So the head area you see here is exactly what we want. The edge of the area was blurred by this node so it can be pasted seamlessly onto the original portrait. And that's the complete process for swapping a head or face using the Queen Edit model in Conf UI. If you'd like to download this workflow to try yourself, please join our community. Your support means a lot. The link is in the video description below. Subscribing to this channel is also really appreciated. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.